give a warm welcome to Eric Charles Nielsen! Well, last week I sprained my ankle. And also I was on the Emmys. There was a montage of comedy series and a clip of community they used. I was standing in the background. Yeah! So I was at home with my sprained ankle. And my friend Sam called me, and she said to me, Eric, you were just on the Emmys. And I said, what? <laughs> and she said, oh, it was, a, it was a clip from Community. And I said, I, I don't feel you needed to specify. <laughs> if it was live, it would have been a lot more interesting. Uh, announcer. Well, this is a guy who occasionally appears in the background on a show that wasn't even nominated for him. <laughs> and we're looking at him right now, and he's wearing a compression bandage and an old basketball shorts. <laughs> we're going to be checking back in with Eric throughout the evening, unless someone calls him and he closes his blinds. <laughs> now John <drunk> Ham. <laughs> Some people say I have a messiah complex. I don't think it's that complex. I mean, I'm not saying I suffer so that you may live. But let's look at the facts here. I suffer. You live. Coincidence? Maybe! Are you saying I'm not self-sacrificing? Let me tell you a story. Two months ago, my girlfriend invited her parents to our apartment. And she bought six kinds of cheese. And I was there. I said to her, girlfriend, I, I address my girlfriend as girlfriend. Girlfriend, you're on a diet. The four of us are not going to eat half of this cheese. Do you want this cheese in the house? And she bought it anyway. And sure enough, two days later, we had a pound and a half of leftover cheese. And do you know what I did? <laughs> I ate that cheese! <laughs> I ate all of that cheese! <laughs> I threw myself upon that cheese to save the woman I love! <laughs> Fine. There is a limit to how sympathetic I'm going to be to her diet. She came into the room a couple weeks ago and said, Eric, I've gained five pounds in the last two weeks. And I said to her, Veronica, that's impossible. You can't actually gain that much unless you're trying. Like, in order to gain five pounds in two weeks, you would basically just have to eat. Your calendar would just have, like, eat on it on Wednesday with arrows pointing in both directions. <laughs> and then the next week, eat arrows. And then at the end of the second week, you just eat the calendar. <laughs> Do the math. They're reintroducing wolves to places <laughs> by popular demand. <laughs> Somewhere somebody's saying, you know what, I like this town. But didn't there used to be wolves around here? <laughs> and someone else chimes in, yeah, those things that ate my grandfather's cat when he was a child? Let's bring them back. <laughs> because you know it's not the wolves that want to come back. Because wolves can't understand hypothetical concepts. <laughs> and even if they could, no wolf would say, you know what, we're living in this forest, it's nice, there's prey, not a lot of stuff going on. But I hear tell that 50 years ago, some other wolves lived in, let's say, western Pennsylvania. And they were shot and starved and driven out of there. And I think it's time to give it another shot. <laughs> wolves. <laughs> I was uh, reading a website about uh, reintroduction of wolves into Mexico. And there was a line on there that I found fascinating. Uh, it said, the Mexican wolf reintroduction effort began in 1998. And ever since then, the wolves have been doing their part, forming packs, killing elk, by 
finding mates and raising cubs. Killing elk? <laughs> in Mexico? <laughs> Did somebody reintroduce elk into Mexico? <laughs> no! Elk and Mexico were not introduced in the first place! <laughs> You'd have to introduce the elk! Possibly by dropping it out of a truck next to some wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Telling you! Some people want to turn America into a theocracy, but I happen to believe that Malcolm Jamal Warner is not qualified to rule. <laughs> yeah, the Republican Party. Is it now run by internet trolls? Because I've seen these patterns before. They're just trying to get everyone so annoyed that they leave. It worked on me. I didn't get through high school before I decided, all right, I could keep paying attention on politics, but I'm probably going to have a heart attack by the time I'm 23. Um, so I didn't. Granted, I was a particularly angry child. I uh, was fired from a summer job once uh, for calling a Burger King customer a barbarian. <laughs> but still, I mean, that's why everyone's like, oh, why aren't these... Uh, why aren't these candidates showing any passion about this? Well, if they had any passion, they, they probably would have quit. <laughs> I'm telling you, why is six afraid of seven? Because <laughs> seven knows too much. <laughs> In closing, I am uh, really frustrated about this new special edition Star Wars DVDs. Yeah, the, the ones inspired by 19th century political cartoons? Yes. I don't think that's necessary. <laughs> like, have you heard about these? Not only does Han not shoot first, but Greedo's arm is emblazoned with the slogan, the abominable French tariff. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> and they're not even coherent. Like, for example, in the scene where Darth Vader interrogates Princess Leia, the captions identify him as Boss Tweed of Tammany Hall. <laughs> but later, when he's telling Luke he's his father, they say Disraeli takes aim at the colonies. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how allegory works, George Lucas! <laughs> it has to be consistent! If C-3PO represents Rutherford B. Hayes, he has to be Rutherford B. Hayes the whole time! He can't be Hayes! then Charles Darwin, then Mark Twain, then Charles Darwin again, then the concept of the gold standard, and that's just in the first movie! <laughs> and one more thing, Mr. Lucas, can you explain to me how, at any point, Lando Calrissian represents the women's suffrage movement? <laughs>